What has unfolded in Flint, Michigan has hit the campaign trail. Bernie Sanders following up on Hillary Clinton's comments about the governor. But Secretary Clinton was right, and what I did, which I think is also right, is demanded the resignation of the governor. A man who acts that irresponsibly should not stay in power. And this is Hillary Clinton, cut four in the big list, talking about how she would have handled Flint. Well, Lester, I spent a lot of time last week being outraged by what's happening in Flint, Michigan. And I think every single American should be outraged. We've had a city in the United States of America where the population, which is poor in many ways and majority African American, has been drinking and bathing in lead contaminated water. And the governor of that state acted as though he didn't really care. He had requests you know, uh for help that he basically stonewalled. I'll tell you what. If the kids in a rich suburb of Detroit had been drinking contaminated water and being bathed in it, there would have been action. So I sent my top campaign aide down there to talk to the uh, mayor of Flint to see what I could do to help. And I issued a statement about what we needed to do. And then I went on a TV show and I said it was outrageous that the governor hadn't acted and within two hours he had. And I want to be a president who takes care of the big problems and the problems that are affecting you know, that, that is all spot on. And I wish that President Obama years ago had jumped into the uh, Detroit, Michigan issue when that city was faltering because it has snowballed. It's been a domino effect throughout the state. But folks, do you see a pattern here? This all comes from Republican ideology. You see a pattern the way they go after labor in this country, the way they want to make every state right to work, the way they want to destroy voices in the workplace the way they want to strip any kind of funding that organized labor has. Let's talk about the public schools and how they want to get rid of the public schools and, and defund everything they can so they can charter school and privatize everything. They want to privatize Social Security. They want to rip that apart. They voted, uh, you know, how many times to get rid of the Affordable Care Act to the point where the president had to veto it. I mean, there's a pattern here. There is a real pattern here. And this is why, if you look, and now I know that there's state by state by state, uh, all the caucuses and primaries and whatnot, but at not one time in any poll this year have we seen any of the Republicans beat Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton in a general election. I mean, there was a poll, I think, about three months ago, but since then, I mean, I, I think people are on to all of this in, in a big way. Uh, our friend Leo Gerard wrote an op-ed that appeared on the Huffington Post earlier this week titled GOP Vows Sickness and Ill Health, where he discussed the Republicans' attempt to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, and he, 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 he just hits the bullseye again. Mr. Gerard, good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Ed. I, I mean, he, all you have to do is pick an issue and make it anti-worker, and you can find a Republican hanging around. I, I, I want to... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's in their DNA. What what about the Affordable Care Act? After all we have been through, what kind of fights do you see on the horizon, and what were you trying to get across in your op-ed? Well, the, 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 the point we're, that we really wanted to make is that, uh, obviously, health care and the Affordable Care Act is a vehicle that has done tremendous good for millions of people. But they don't give a damn. What, what, what the Republican establishment and the so-called anti-establishment, there's no difference between them. It's just in the way they talk. And, and, and they view that they want to get rid of all government. They want to get rid of all health care. Uh, they want to turn everything over once again back to the insurance industry. They don't want workers to have a voice. They want to import everything that they can import uh, from the cheapest places in the world. And, and their agenda is not just anti-worker, which it fundamentally is. Their, their agenda is pro-1%. They're against the middle class, anything that will help the middle class. Let's look at Social Security. For I could, I could write an article on Social Security tomorrow. The fact of the matter is that Social Security is one of the most important programs in America that keeps millions and millions of people out of poverty in their later years of life. And you know what? The biggest percentage of people that use Social Security are people with disabilities and women together. 
mm-hmm. uh, and so that they keep them out of out of abject poverty. You want to fix Social Security? It's not hard. It's really not very hard. I don't make a lot of money, but I make good money. I, I reach my Social Security cap usually around the end of September, the beginning of October. My secretary, who works 50 feet from me, she pays right till the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Why the hell should I get off in October because I make a little bit more money? Mm-hmm. Take the same percentage till the end of the year. If you don't want billionaires and millionaires to pay on their billion and million, put a cap on it of 250000 Let the, that you, you, you cut out it once you've paid up to 250000 And you know what we can do? We can improve Social Security for people. So health care, rights of workers, uh, tax policy, trade policy. Uh, I, I'm just looking at, I'm just before I got on the call with you, I'm looking at some statistics that I asked our research department to do. They blew me off my chair. i got to figure out what to do about this. We went from having 12 smelters, refineries in the aluminum industry 10 years ago, to we're going to have roughly four or five left. Last year, we made 1.9 million tons of aluminum. We imported 4.1 million tons of aluminum. What does that mean for our national defense? Yeah. Should something happen in real serious, not, you know, not the wars that we went to look for like George Bush did, but what if we have a real national security issue? We're going to have to rely on our importation of aluminum from Russia, from China, from India. China has 121 aluminum smelters. You just heard me. We're going to end up with five, four or five. I can do the same thing in stool, like steel. I can do the same thing in paper. So I tried to use the Affordable Care Act as an example of the cruelty and the meanness of the Republican Party, but I could have done it on almost any of the other factors. No doubt about it. Leo Gerard with us. He is the United Steelworkers International President, always on the front end of issues and fighting for workers, no doubt. What's at stake in this election? Let's just say, uh, well, let's talk right to work. I know that right to work has been a big, big deal. If they were to get the executive branch, and if it were Trump, what kind of battle do you think that labor would be facing in this country when it comes to right to work? Would he be supporting all of that? Has labor been able to vet him in that regard? If if, if I calm down a bit, <laughs> if uh, if we have a... Republican House of Representatives and a Republican Senate, God help us, and a Trump or Cruz or any of the others, like I said, the others are just as bad. They just don't talk with the same intensity as the as, as Cruz and uh, and Trump. If, if we ended up with them, they will wipe out, their goal would be to wipe out the labor movement. And they will not only pass right to work for less legislation, but they'll pass all kinds of other things that make it hard for unions to function. They'll, they'd wipe out the Labor Relations Board so that we have no place to go to adjudicate disputes uh, when companies have acted illegally. Uh, it, 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 would, it would be a disaster. And, and you know, Ed, if they look at the real numbers, the, the decline in the intensity of the labor movement, the density of the labor movement, brought about by trade and bad labor policy and the widening income inequality gap, they mirror each other. Yeah. People aren't people aren't falling into poverty because they didn't graduate college. People are falling into poverty because wages have been flat since nineteen seventy one. Um, you know, well, and, and in reality wages had grown from seventy one to about eighty but since since eighty, lots of the years have been negative growth. That's why it brings out that it looks like yeah. it's flat since seventy one. Let's let let's look at the, the Democratic candidates for just a moment before I let you go, Mister Gerard. Don't you believe that this debate on issues, key issues, core issues, progressive issues between Hillary and Bernie Sanders has been the, maybe one of the healthiest things this movement has seen? I, I mean, the the way they're you know they're distancing themselves clearly apart from the Republicans, but we're getting a a healthy debate on what we believe in. I mean, at the end of the day, that's where we are. Your thoughts? Look, I actually think that uh, I I was in Washington yesterday and uh, had some time in the office, and I have a TV in my office in Washington, and I turned it on, 
And lo and behold, what did I see? But the failed vice president, the governor that quit midterm, uh, Sarah Palin, ranting and raving. I mean, almost in- incomprehensible about issues that are non-existent. Yeah. And 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 yelling about immigration, uh, yelling about uh, blame, blaming the fact that her son got drunk and beat up his girlfriend. Blaming that on President Obama. And that's a, that's a, as far a stretch as I could imagine. But then there's sitting, standing beside her is Donald Trump giving the thumbs up. Yeah. That's lunacy. It is. We're becoming the laughing stock of the world. So your question is, Bernie and uh, Secretary Clinton are debating real issues of real importance to America. And, and they're both doing a terrific job getting those issues out. Both of them, or either of them, would be by a long shot better for American uh, people, not only the middle class, but for everyone, than no either doubt. of the Republican candidates. I don't care if it's uh, uh, Cruz or uh, Rubio or what's his name from New Jersey. I mean, the bully from New Jersey that. Um, Christie. Christie. <laughs> well, you know what? You look at it, Leo. Go back to 2010. Yeah. These six governors that came in, we're yeah. talking about this nut job down in Florida who got reelected. Yeah. Christie, Kasich, Snyder, yeah. Walker. There, a half a dozen of them came in on the Tea Party wave, thought that privatization was the right way to go and attacking workers. They're all polling in the toilet. Look yeah. where Christie is nationally. Work where Kasich is nationally. Uh, the guy Rick Scott down in Florida had to cheat his way to get reelected. Walker fell out early. So look what Snyder's done to Michigan. I mean, you, you could write a, a whole piece on these guys that hoodwinked their voters in 2010 because we had a black president and because we were doing something about health care. Uh, and, and, and look what they have to show for their for for, for what they've done. Every one of the, every one of those states is in a crisis. The the, o- the only one of those that you mentioned that's doing reasonably well is Ohio. Yeah, and and, and, and that's and because reason- of the automobile uh, loan program. Exactly, it, and and uh, Betty Sutton, who was a congressperson, she lost to a Republican who uh, outspent her like eight or nine to one. <laughs> Excuse me, but Betty Sutton and the and the president brought in the the. Uh, recovery system for the for the auto industry, and and they attacked that. They would have sooner let those auto plants die, and and the fact of the matter is because President Obama did that, the auto industry is booming in America on the assembly side. Just now, had their best year, 2015. Yeah. And and the president and I and and his his administration have a big dispute over yeah. trade. And, and he's been right on so many things, but he's wrong on trade. And although Ohio is doing good, Michigan's doing good, some other auto states are doing pretty good, in the long run, we got a problem. No doubt. Because of the trade deal and the TPP, they're now assembling cars in Mexico. Mexico is now making more cars than Michigan. And so that the, the, when, when the TPP is in place, they're going to bring parts from Vietnam. They're going to bring parts from China. They're going to bring parts from Malaysia. They're going to bring parts from other places. They're going to bring them to Mexico. They're going to assemble cars in Mexico. They're going to ship them into the U.S. duty-free. These now, are the real problems. Rocket, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. No doubt. So that, and now, if we had a Republican administration put that program on steroids, they, their, their objective is to wipe us out. Make a, you know, they want to bring our standard of living, the Republicans do, and, and they never say it, but as long as they can freeze us over a period of time, another 5, 10, 15, 20 years, we'll be working for the equivalent of Mexican wages in real terms. United Steelworkers International Hello, President Leo Gerard. Mr. Gerard, it's always good to visit. Appreciate your time. We'll do it again. Thank you, my friend. Keep up the thank fight. You and your, yeah, thank you, and you still, you're our voice. We love you. Back on the tube on Monday, uh, I had him adjust the cameras so both you and I can get on at the same time, and, and, and the place won't blow up. Everything's going to be good.
<laughs> wide, wide angle lenses. <laughs> That's right. All right, buddy. We'll talk. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.